we're going to just read verse 48. And he said unto her, daughter, take courage. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Now, this is Jesus, and he's talking to a young lady. Now, as we go through this world, we deal in life, we will have things that will affect us negatively. This young lady had what they call an issue of blood. She was bleeding. And she had been in this state for 12 years. And in her suffering, she had spent all of her resources trying to find healing. And she finally made up in her mind that if she, if Jesus was coming by, that if she could just touch him, she would be healed. She would be made whole. Now, how many of us in this room realize that the Bible said that Jesus, that God is nigh you at all times? That, that there's never a time that God is not near us. Well, in this case, because Jesus was in his human state, he was walking by her. And because she was in his presence, she realized she had to take this opportunity to receive what she wanted from God. We have that opportunity every day, all day. Amen. So why is it that we wrestle with things when we can just give it to him? In this moment, she said, if I can just touch him, I'm going to be better. But she didn't just say it with her mouth. She took an action because she did what she thought in her heart to do. Many times as we're wrestling in life, God will present to us remedies of how to be better, of how to stop some of our suffering. And we, many times we feel like Sometimes we feel like we got to fix it ourselves. Or he don't do it just like we think. But this lady, because she touched the hem of his garment, her of Jesus' garment, and received her healing, Jesus realized he had touched her. This is a part of the story. After he realized he had touched her, after who touched me? And, they, and they're going through this dialogue about how do you know somebody touched you? Because you, you're walking through this crowd of people and all of them are bumping you. But there was something different about the way she touched him. Because virtue left out of him. But the virtue that left out of him, the healing that left out of him, happened because of what? Because of her faith. God will move when we have faith in him. Because God will not fall short of his promises. The word of God will stand forever. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the Bible says his word will not pass away. But the Bible also says us that his word will not return unto him void. But it will accomplish the thing that he has set forth for it to do. So if God has promised it, he has the ability to execute it. So in this moment, Jesus says to her, Daughter, be of courage. Your faith has made you whole. We've got to start executing faith. Amen. Belief Amen. that God can change our state of being. Amen. That no matter what I'm wrestling with, the power is in God to make it better. Amen. To deliver me. Even as we wrestle, if we can touch, now the, the thing about touching is not just what we think at some time. Yes, she did touch the hem of his garment, but faith made that a different kind of touch. Because we can go around touching stuff all day and don't nothing happen. Sometimes I get my leg through the week and I touch a bench to help hold me up. <laughs> But the point being, I have faith in the bench. But the point being, we have to understand faith. That faith she had solved her problem. Because.
because she said that if I, because she knew Jesus could do it. How many of y'all think that there's something in your life that you're wrestling with that Jesus cannot, that, that Jesus does not have the power to solve? If it's something you feel like that's bigger than God, so why are we wrestling with it? If God is bigger than anything we're wrestling with, we've got to learn how to execute our faith. It will make your, our lives better when we execute the way God has determined for faith to work. Amen. Now, sometimes we think that uh, there, there's a, a, an analogy and there's also scripture that when you ask, it shall be given seeking and, and you shall find. And, we, and people will say that when you ask them in his name, you shall receive it. But there are things in the Bible that adds clarity to that. Because sometimes people think that when they ask God for something, it's automatically going to happen. But are you really asking in faith? Or are you asking in desire? There is a difference. Because sometimes everything this flesh desires may not be, it, it won't be, no, I'm going to say that, I'm going to say that with clarity. Everything this flesh desire is not the will of God for you. So we need to start to understand that operating in faith is also operating in the will of God. But there's nothing that we wrestle with that's beyond his help. He also told us that if we would cast all of our cares upon him, why are we casting our cares upon him? Because he cares for us. We're casting our cares upon him because he has the ability to solve them. He's not telling you, I don't want anybody telling me, uh, uh, I wouldn't want anybody telling me to bring me all your bills so I can see him. I don't need you to see him, I need you to pay him. If I'm going to bring him, you need to have some action yes. behind the, my action. Yes. So when God is telling us to bring them, this, bring all our cares, He said, "I have the ability to take care of them. I have the ability to get you in a better place." Now, there's something I need. We need to also understand about as God heals us, as God brings us to different spaces, we still have the ability to choose. And when God brings us out of something, there's this thing called familiarity. Sometimes as men, we will go back to familiar places and we know they're not good for us. God has healed you and brought you to a better place. But because you become in a place of struggle, you maybe go back and get that thing. But we have to understand, faith will bring us deliverance. Our walk in Christ is what keeps us free. Amen. Continuing to walk in the path that he's chosen for you, that he has designed for you. And when temptation comes, don't yield. James, as you said, when a man is tempted, he is tempted of the lust of his own flesh and enticed. And he said, when he yields, that's when sin is produced, and then that sin will produce death. Satan is moving about trying to get us off what I call off my spot. Trying to get me out of my place. Trying to divert my vision of the vision God has placed in my heart for where he's trying to take me as individuals. We have to not allow Satan to bring doubt because doubt and faith can operate in the same space. Either you believe him or you don't. And faith is the ability, once again, to though my eyes see that it's not there, God has spoken it, and it will manifest itself. It will come, even in my struggles. Some people think that Christianity is all about a cakewalk. Every day you're going to get up, and it's going to be sunshine. And you're not going to have no rain. Job said that a man is born of a woman is of a few days. 
And those days is full of trouble. So what he's saying, we will have struggles. But Job also said that I shall see my redeemer in the, in the last days. Job also made this statement, though God slay me, I'm still trusting him. Why was Job still trusting? Because he knew God would deliver him. But he also said, if he don't, I'm good because why? I'm going to a better space. But God will deliver us down here. The ultimate delivery is heaven. But God will deliver us from our struggles down here. But we have to be able to execute faith. There's another story in the Bible real quickly. And it's, it's a man, and he was a, a, centurion, a centurion soldier. He wasn't even a Jew. And the, the, the work had not even come to the, uh, uh, to the Gentiles yet. But this brother sent for Jesus. And he told Jesus to, that his, his servant was sick. And he wanted Jesus. He sent somebody to get Jesus because he didn't feel worthy to go to Jesus. And when they came to Jesus, Jesus was uh, encouraged by the Jews because he was a good man to go and heal his servant. Now, as he's going to heal the servant, he sent the word to Jesus, you don't have to come. And I'm going to read what he said. He said, it's over in uh, uh, Luke 7, chapter, and it's, I'm going to read the 8th verse. I start the 7th verse. He said, so I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but I say the, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man that placed in authority, having soldiers under me, and I say one go and go here, and, and one come to me, and, and this is done. And what the man said to Jesus was, in verse 7 was, I don't want you to come. But he said, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. So what Jesus' response to him was in verse 9, and when Jesus heard these things, he looked at him with admiration and turned around and said to the people that were following him, I tell you, I have not found faith so great, not even in Israel. What was this man's faith? What did he do? The greatest example of this was the fact that he didn't feel worthy for Jesus to come to his house. But he knew that if Jesus sent the word that he would get what he asked for. He realized that Jesus had the power not to even have to have his human presence there, but his word. And when you think about that, that's what the foundations of the world is hinged on. On what? Is hidden on the word of God. The moon, I mean, the sun will rise in the east and set in the west every day because that's what the word of God designed for it to do. Somebody was looking at some science stuff, and uh, I think they said the world, the earth spins at about 800 miles per hour. Yeah, I'm on the spectrum, something like that. Well, I'll say like, I mean, like, may I, may I don't have a number, I'm going to say like, the, the earth is spinning real fast. Now, if I don't have a number, let's say that. Because I read a lot of stuff. The point I'm getting to is, how many of y'all feel it move? You moving right now, you spinning right now. Because... The reality of it all together, the sun and moon really don't move. We move. Did you realize that? I said it actually, but actually we're, we're spinning, we're moving. Because of Shawi, we talked to a young lady, she's over in, uh, over in the Philippines, and there are 12 hours difference in our time. Well, the reason there's 12 hours difference in our time is because Time is actually set by how the sun and moon sets. So when I'm sitting over at 12 o'clock at night in the dark, she's over at 12 o'clock noon in, in, the, in, in the daylight. The point that I'm getting to is that all of these things are hinged upon the word of God. And this man knew.
know that if Jesus would send the word, his word, his word of him, that his servant would be healed. And it was so powerful until Jesus said there was nobody in Israel that had the faith that that heathen had, that the Gentile had. And the point I'm getting to is that it doesn't matter who you are or what your background is. God honors faith. It doesn't matter what your last name is. It don't matter what family you was born into. It don't matter if you're rich, poor. It, none of that matters when you have faith. Because God honors faith. He does not honor position. Amen. Positions are human design. Faith is God's design. And when we put faith in his word, he will, he will move in our spaces. He will open doors for us and make ways for us. Because he cannot not honor his word. So we've got to start executing faith. We've got to start walking in faith. We've got to start declaring faith over our lives, over our wives, over our husbands, over our children, over our neighborhoods, over our, our uh, um, uh, neighbors. Over the police and the president, let's really uh, uh, declare faith over the presidents and this presidential election. And we say that everybody needs to vote. Yeah. As we say, I don't care who you vote for, vote though. Because people that don't vote don't complain. Because you had opportunity to um, voice how you wanted things to turn out. And if you didn't vote, that means you didn't care. So, you know, you really don't have a complaint after the fact. Somebody say one vote don't matter. Well, it must matter because if you add them all together, that's how you accumulate everything. So let's not, you know, let's use that excuse. The, the thing is, there are many sacrifices that's been made. And some of y'all say, I don't have faith in time of faith. We don't have faith in the, in the uh, election process. So not participating is how you're going to uh, uh, deal with that. No. If they, whatever they're doing, they, however they mean it, slander, whatever, they're going to have my vote in there to do it with. I'm not going to take a chance. It may be all straight, so I'm, I'm going to make sure mine's in there to influence. And this is, what this, this is what this country is about. The opportunity to express what you feel in that moment. It doesn't make any difference that anybody agree or disagree. As an American citizen, you have the right to express what you think. Amen. And you need to take advantage of that. But faith is the ability, is the opportunity that no matter what's going on, you are going to walk it out. You are going to allow God to have his way with you and in you. You will not yield your space, your time, to what Satan has, has designed for you. But you are going to execute your faith to say, God, I trust you. I trust this soul that you've given me. That you are going to give me an expected outcome. And that outcome is good. Amen. That outcome is to not only dwell with him in heavenly places, but also live a better life here. Yes. It's not the will of God that we don't have, but it's the will of God that we be saved. Yes. Because if you're rich and go to hell, it means nothing. What profit is it to have everything? And you lose your soul. What profit is it for real? So we need to now, in this moment, take control of your destiny. Take control of where you're going to spend eternity. Amen. That's what this is really all about. Executing faith. How many of you believe that God is real? That God is a, a being? Amen. Okay. Just want to be sure. <laughs> so we know that he's real. Yes. 
So it's not that we don't know that he's real. Now we need to now we need to figure out if he's a real God, how do I put myself in a place of peace with him? If he is the creator, how do I, as an individual, place myself in his will? That's every man's choice. Every day that they open their eyes, and when they close their eyes, when they sleep, that is a choice all day. Where am I in the plan of God for my life? Since we all know he's real, let's start executing faith. First of all, the faith to receive salvation. To know that Jesus Christ died for your sins. That he rose again. And now he's sitting on the right hand of his father making intercessions for us. No matter what's going on with us, no matter how we grow yet, Jesus is there as our elder brother speaking on our behalf. So in these moments of struggle, execute faith. Paul said it like this, let me tell you. He said, therefore, I, I pleasure in, in my infirmities. This is Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. Well, actually, well, I'll read verse 9. He, he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity and reproach and necessity and persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I realize I'm weak, that's when I know he's strong. Amen. That's what we as human beings have to come to a place of understanding. We ain't strong enough to do everything God would have us to do. Yes. The truth be told, we don't really control a lot of things in our spaces. Yes. The greatest control is always in God's hand. Amen. So when we realize that when I'm weak, that really what he's saying is, when I realize I can't do it, I just let God do it. I get out of his way. You understand? I was saying that I, my, my friend always laughed at me when I said and I tell them, I say, whatever God is doing in my life, I'm trying to stay out of his way. 